Hi there everyone, welcome to Paper Train Saturday Showcase Feature. I'm Ashley Newell and this week we're going to be featuring Better Together Stamp Set and Die Collection. And this stamp set, it is all about flowers. Um, it's hand drawn and it's an outline image. The really cool thing about this is that you can use some techniques, coloring techniques, painting techniques. And in this video today I'm going to be using um, color pencil coloring techniques with Prismacolor coloring pencils. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of partial die cutting and a little bit of stenciling. So a little bit of everything um, to create a really cool card. So let's take a look at the card um, that I've already made. I'll be making a different version during the video though, but let's take, let's take a look at the project first. And this card, this is a four by six inch card. And what I did was I partially die cut um, the left side of the floral cluster image out. And then I used color pencils to color it in. The next thing I did was I added some stenciling to the white panel. And then I added stenciling to my sweet blush uh, card front part. Um, applied it with some foam adhesive and then added a little bit of a sentiment on the banner strip. So I'm going to be trying to replicate this card on video with you today. Um, and I'm going to be using different colors and I'm also going to be partial die cutting the opposite side so you can see that process as well. So I hope you enjoy uh, this week's video um, and so let's get started creating a card. Alright, the first thing I want to do is just quickly run through the stamp set. Here is Better Together. As you can see this is the main floral cluster here. Um, and then you have some extra elements that you can use to build your own flowers. Um, there's also lots of different sentiments. You can send sending you um, feel better hugs, sending you smiles, sending you prayers, sending you all my love. And then you can also have a via snail mail here. Um, on the other side of the stamp sheet, there's more floral elements. Um, there's this little bit of a box here that says handmade with love. You can stamp on the back side of the card or an envelope. And then there are also some larger um, sentiments as well. A thank you one, uh, making life better, just more of a, you know, laugh, smile, live type of encouragement type of sentiments. Okay, so um, I'm going to be using lemon tart cardstock for my card base here that's similar to this side, but it's going to be on this side. And then I have my four by six um, white piece here. I didn't show you guys the dies. Um, this, this set also comes with coordinating dies. They usually show the dies. And you can get the coordinating dies separately, I should say. Um, includes lots of different dies where you can die cut the different uh, floral separate images as well. And then it also, the die collection comes with the full cluster die too. And so if you were to die cut them, they would look something like this. All right, so those are the dies. All right, so the first thing I want to do when making this card is I want to get this um, situated so I can know where I want to partially die cut. Um, I know I want it to be about, I'm gonna take my um, T-square ruler here. I know I want it to be about one and three quarter inches um, of a panel. So I'm just gonna mark that part there wide and then I'm just going to take my t-square ruler and then make my line straight down from my one and three quarter inches okay so I kind of want to do this on both sides and I'll tell you why in a second so I'm going to mark my one and three quarter inch line on the opposite side of my cardstock as well. Okay, so here's my cluster die. And I want, since I want this to be the opposite side, I want my panel to be on this side. I want this side to cut. So I'm gonna write on this side, this is my cut side, okay? And I'm gonna position my die where I want it because this side will cut all of the detail that you see here and this side will keep that white panel so I'm just have some washi tape already here on my die to keep it in place all right and then the same side here this side will be my cut side so I'm going to write cut here so just a reminder where I need to cut 
and this is the line on the opposite side where I need to cut and this is the reason why I am marking it on this side is because in uh, my machine I, I am going to be cutting um, cut side up so I'm just going to show you how I you know put it in my sandwich here I'm using um, the crafters companion Gemini so I'm just going to be putting it here cut side up um, and then I'm going to be putting my plate, my cutting plate, along this line here. This is my cut side, so it's going to cut from here up, but not from here down. So I'm going to put my plate right here up against that line and then run it through my machine. All right, just so you can see exactly how it looks when it comes out of the machine, I'm just going to remove my cut plate. Take it off of my magnet sheet. And you can see here, it did cut on the cut side, okay? And this is the cut side as well. So that's a little bit of a trick when you wanna um, cut cut side up. So the next thing I wanna do, I'm just gonna take a, a cut mat here, and I am going to take my T-square ruler again line it up against that line or wherever the die cut line is take an exacto knife and cut away the parts i want to remove without cutting into the actual uh, die cut you don't want to cut too much out because that takes away from the whole effect of it and you're going to just cut your whole die so you want to just cut the little small elements away and you have to get close enough to where going to cut these little pieces out and cut around there so if it doesn't get in there you can kind of just take your craft knife and make sure it cuts in there and make sure that the die cut lines meet your cut lines here if it doesn't you can just take your craft knife and just cut right through there. If you need to uh, sharpen anything up, you can do that. Just finish off any of the edges with a little bit of a filing tool. I've had these filing tools for years. And you also want to get rid of that pencil mark that I did earlier. And just erase that. And sometimes from the cutting plate there is a little bit of um, a score line and you can kind of get it out with a little bit just by getting the crease out but you won't see that in the actual card design once you get everything stamped, which is my next step. So now I'm going to take uh, my stamp positioner and my stamp and remove it because I want to make sure it's positioned in the right place. This on here is a little bit long. And then I'll position this here onto my die cut. I'm going to take True Black ink here, ink my stamp, and give it a go. Press, okay, and see there's a little bit here, I want to make sure I get rid of that so it doesn't get on my cardstock. I'm going to just go it again and press wherever the ink did not transfer the first time. Okay, and I can also ink it up again. I'm just going to do a little bit light. Alright. 
take my little spatula tool to remove it from my little sticky mat. And there is my partial die cut. And right now it doesn't look like much, but compared to what it should have been as a die, this is an option of something that you can do to make a little border or something like that and just create a different layout to your card design. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is color. All right, so since I'm using yellow, I'm gonna be trying, I'm gonna be using different other colors this time. But I start with the green. Um, I don't know, I think because it's easy. And I blend and you just kind of have to go over things with a colored pencil. So you don't have to use just one color. And so you don't have to watch me color everything. I'm going to skip over most of the coloring and then stop at certain points so you can see how I colored along the way. All right, so now that I did all of my coloring, which is the, probably the most time consuming part, the next step I'm gonna do is take my stencil and do some stenciling. Take a little bit of Harvest Gold ink. And then take my card front here. This side will go here, and so I wanna make sure that my stencil is gonna be on this side and where I wanna place it, so I need to just go not all the way over. Not that it matters if I do, but don't want to waste your time. Another tip when I'm stenciling, um, especially polka dot pattern, I position my, let me move this up so you can see, I position my stencil so some of the polka dot pattern is kind of coming off the edge. I don't know why I like to have that start like that, but I think it gives it a, a realistic pattern. And I want a subtle polka dotted pattern, so nothing too strong. So as you can see, it's building up there. So now I'll move this to the side and do, stencil this side of it. So I'm gonna start here at the top. It's actually a little bit long, but I'll start here at the top. When I'm stenciling this side, I don't want to really go over the flower stamped, so I kind of avoid it as much as I can. I'm just going to put a piece of cardstock here so I don't stamp, I mean, stencil on that part. The places where I do want to stencil in there, I just kind of dab it lightly. Um, I'll take a peek. Yeah, that looks pretty good. 
and I'm also going to take one of these Micron uh, archival ink pens and just add a little bit of dots to the center of the flowers. And this is just something that I like to do if the original illustrator has not included stamps like this in there. It's so much, it's so easy to do on your own and just add some details. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of lines here. And I just think it just makes it have a little bit more texture and design elements with those lines. Take a little bit of a finer one and go around there. Finer tip marker pen. And that helps me get the detail a little bit more defined. All right, so now I'm gonna take some foam adhesive. I can find it and add it to the back of this piece. All right, to add this to my card front, I put it on the side that it's going to be on, which is this side, put them both together and line them up like so, and then here well not like that like this make sure that they're aligned on the bottom edge on that side which which will be the side and then I pop it on and that's how I make sure it's even all right so I already for my sentiment what I did was I already have heat embossed um, with white embossing powder using Versamark ink um, I already stamped it watermark with the watermark ink, heat emboss it with the white embossing powder on black, true black cardstock. And I'm just gonna add a little bit different this time, sending you all my love like that. So I'm gonna figure out how I'm going to do this. Snip these sides here so I can add them. Trim this up a little bit. Take my foam adhesive and add it to the back. And I'm gonna line it up here on the bottom. Do the same thing for the top. And a little bit more. And there is my other card with the panel on the left side. And then this one is with the panel on the right side with the sentiment in the center. Just give you two different options, different color combinations of what you can do and how you can design this particular card in different ways, but using the same techniques. 
All right, everybody, that wraps up this week's Saturday Showcase featuring Better Together stamp set and the Coordinating Die Collection. I hope you enjoyed my creative process in designing the love card um, featuring some partial die cutting, stenciling, and uh, color penciling and heat embossing, lots of stuff going on there to create a different version of a card that I've already created. So I hope you get to creating. Maybe you can pull out some color pencils, maybe try partial die cutting technique, a little stenciling. Just have fun and enjoy the process. For Paper Trank, I'm Ashley Newell. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.